So I called this talk, I Am Worthy of a Higher Thought. A few weeks ago, when I was doing the interviews at, uh, with U Unity Worldwide Ministries, you know, for, for applicants who were applying to get into the ministerial school in one of the paths, one of the three paths, and then the next week was the progress interviews for people already in it. And there was a lot uh, of interviews, but I heard uh, so many wonderful things. And there was a woman who's, I don't remember her name, but she said something in her interview that I just loved and I wrote it down. And uh, today we're doing a talk on it. She, she was talking about a time when she had been confused about something. And she said, but I know I'm worthy of a higher thought. So I just asked for a higher thought. And I thought, it's that simple, isn't it? I knew this. But I never heard, I don't remember if I had heard the, those words. I am worthy of a higher thought. Write it down, people. <laughs> Write it down. And I was like, what did Sean say on Sunday? It was so good. Yeah, it was the whole talk title. <laughs> I am worthy of a higher thought. When, when, when I remember when Michelle Obama said, well, when they go low, we go high. Mm. Well, when I go low, I can change my mind and go high. For, to, who knows what they, whoever they are, are going to do. When I go low, I can change my mind and go high because I am worthy of a higher thought. And I'm thinking about this, and I thought, well, what's the difference between worthy and entitled? And entitled thinks I deserve it for some reason. And worthy is about my connection to spirit, my connection to God, my connection to light, intelligence, life. I am worthy of the whole kingdom because I am the beloved child of a creative God. Unique and loving, unique, what did I say a few weeks ago? A unique child of a creative God. I think a loving and creative God. I think that's what I said that day. I am worthy of the whole kingdom, but I can't experience it without taking responsibility. It's kind of saying, for waking myself up to it. I can completely shut myself down. I can go low, as it were, and shut myself down because I want it to look different. I want it to feel different than it did. And so I will sit by myself with a temper tantrum. That's not always true. I don't always sit by myself while I have a temper tantrum. Sometimes I invite people to witness it. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Sometimes I like to include. There's a, there's a story about uh, an attorney who was negotiating for a famous person. And, and the attorney said to the, the, the producer, if she doesn't get what she wants, she will be upset. And she is never upset alone. <laughs> and are you one of those people who was never upset alone? You invite people to the party because it's too painful to having your own, and you forgot to go high. Hi. You forgot to go high. You know, I, I, you forgot you're worthy of a higher thought. And ever since a few weeks ago when I heard this, I've been reminding myself over and over and over again to, to say that to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute here, I am worthy of a higher thought. And it seems like in the past few weeks, I've gotten a lot more occasions to remind myself of that. Now, there have been a lot of circumstances that have uh, come about. We're not going into the details here because that's not the point. The point is, I've had a lot of circumstances in my life lately that have uh, like, oh, I didn't, I don't think I created this, but I don't know. The point is I can create their meaning for me. I can say this means this, and this means this, and this one means this, and this one means this. Now, none of that is true, but I can tell myself. 
It is. And when I tell myself that without praying, without going within and asking, I go low. And I don't even, ha I don't have to invite people, other people into a pity party or into an angry place. I can just tell myself I should be angry. I should I should feel this way. Look at this happened, and now I should feel this way. I feel shame, and so therefore I should react this way, and I feel humiliated, and so I should act this way. And it's not true. And I'm so blessed. I, I have a lot of years of practice with this. And so even while I was experiencing certain sensations, certain emotions, certain feelings, I still knew the truth. I didn't interrupt the a lot of those things in order to practice what I knew to be true, but I still knew them and I knew and I knew the truth and I knew the truth would prevail at some point. I, and all I had to do was let it, but I knew the truth would prevail because the truth is always going to be true. And what isn't true will never be true. Well, let's, you know, make a note about that. What is true or truth, either way you can put it, capital T, is always going to be true. And what is not true will never be true, and we will never make it true. And we can maintain the feelings, we can maintain the misery, we can maintain uh, the upset, and the, quite frankly, the lie to ourselves. And, and sometimes it's, it's, oh, it's maddening, isn't it? It's just maddening. I know the truth, but I don't want to let go of this story. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. I know the truth. I know what God is. I know all this. And still, I want to throw the temper tantrum. I still want this story. because Why? Because I forgot I am worthy of a higher thought. I am worthy because I'm God's beloved child. I am worthy of the kingdom. It is my divine inheritance. And the only thing I have to do in so many cases is to just remind myself, oh, wait a minute, I'm worthy of a higher thought. And then you may have to go, <laughs> Got that, Josh. You might have to go, Rrr. Lee, you got that. You might have to go, err. And, uh, everybody, err. <laughs> you know, and it's everybody, err, out there in the kingdom of God, you know? And then when it, it, when it gets frustrating, when it's like, oh, but, but, oh, yeah, I know it's true, but, but they did this, and now I'm stuck with these feelings, and it's like, no, you're not. No, you are not. You're not stuck with them. I know, I know from personal experience how difficult it can be to uh, move through them and finally move past them to see the good that has come from the, the situation, to see the good that has kind of, and I, I don't know if you're like me, sometimes I, when I have my full realization, or maybe 99% realization, of the good that has come from this upset, from what I think someone has done to me and everything. I, that, well, the reason I say 99% is because I'm still not quite ready to go let those people know that good has come from it. I'm still ready to let them stew for a little bit. Uh, while I'm over here, back to celebrating life and love and wisdom. The other day, I actually did apologize to someone who I'd been upset over something, and I, and I went to him and I said, I know, I see, I see the good that has come from this and I see why you asked for this of me and I see why it happened and I apologize for misjudging it. And it was nice to be able to do that. As, and I did it as soon as I realized. I didn't hold out to let them be guilty or suffer in the least. I did it because let's just set everybody free. Let's just set everybody free as quickly as possible. Why? Because I'm worthy of a higher thought and you're worthy of a higher thought. And if I can help facilitate that higher thought in you, well then, I, I need to do that. 
That doesn't mean I'm capable of facilitating that higher thought in you if I'm not willing to have it myself. It's not about me coming, you should have a higher thought. You should, you're worthy of that higher thought. I'm going to sit over here trying to find a way to manage my misery, but you should have a higher thought. And I'll tell you why. So you won't hurt me again. So you won't do something to confuse me again. So you're worthy of a higher thought. But that that's, that's, I don't play that game anymore either, I'm noticing. We're all worthy of a higher thought. And today I keep the focus on, on my own affirmation. I am worthy of a higher thought. Now listen to this a little bit. Uh, and, and it comes from, I believe it's Ephesians. When he was entered into Capernaum, there came into him a centurion. Yeah, it's Ephesians chapter 8. I looked up a lot of Bible passages, and this is the one I, I, I liked so much. Uh, okay. No, it isn't. It's from Matthew 8. It's from Matthew 8. That's right. Because uh, I couldn't figure out how Jesus got into Ephesians. Here, It made no sense at all to me just now. I know Jesus is coming up here. Ah. Uh, so when he was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth in the house, sick of the palsy, grievously, grievously tormented. And he saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having under myself soldiers. And I say to this one, go, and he goeth, and he doeth. Come, and he cometh unto my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom shall be cast forth into the outer darkness. There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. I love the Bible. Uh, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed. So be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that hour. Now, here's the thing. It's like, what do you mean, a man, a faith that is so great? Now, I, I, I'm, I'm quite certain that back then, no one would have been calling Jesus Lord. Remember, well, first of all, they weren't speaking English. He would have said rabbi, if anything. And if Jesus' reputation was as a healer, it would make sense that he would believe that Jesus could heal. What he didn't know is he himself also had the power to heal. Why could he not? And this is part of the unworthiness. I'm unworthy. It could mean a million things. It could be because my house is a mess. I've known people who felt they were unworthy to entertain because of what they felt their house looked like. I've known people who felt they were unworthy to break bread with another because they didn't have as much money. I've known people who were uh, believed themselves to be unworthy about so many things. And in this case, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof because he may have felt that Jesus was a holy man and that he himself was not a holy man. He was a leader amongst his people. He had soldiers and things under him, but he needed his servant. He clearly, he relied upon this servant. The servant uh, meant a lot to him. There was not a dispensable or a disposable servant as so many were back then. And so, but I know you could heal him. And see, that's his faith. He, where Jesus says the great, this man's great faith, he knows it is possible that his servant can be healed. And that's where we need to start from, to know that healing is possible and not to throw that thought out because we don't know how it's possible. We don't know how to bring it about. We have to start with, I know that it is possible. I know that I could be healed or someone else could be healed. And then you ask, do I? Do I know that? Am I, do I want to believe that or am I more committed to 
the doubt. I've been going to unity for how many years, and yet I don't want to believe in what we teach here and what we study here. It, uh, healing is clearly not a miracle. It happens all the time. People heal right and left. They heal of a uh, spiritual ailment. They heal of a uh, physical ailment, mental ailments. They heal of addictions. They heal of so much. Relationships heal all the time. And so to look at it, so, so to look at, you could have, I am, I, I know it is possible that the world I see may be healed. Now, do you understand? In order to experience that, you're going to have to become willing to see the world differently. You cannot keep talking about what's wrong with the world and expect the world to shift in your eyes. You see, it may be shift, the world may be shifting all over the place in other people's eyes. They may be experiencing great healings and great love and great stuff. And you don't get to because oh, you don't really think it's possible. You don't really think it's possible. Oh, and I remember there was a president a lot of years ago that was in that some people I know weren't happy about. And they kept, I, and I kept, I was early in unity and I still kept saying, pray for his prosperity. Pray for his prosperity. And they said, no, that means he'll get what he wants. I said, no, it doesn't. At least not in his ego. He'll get what he wants in his heart. And include yourself in that prayer of prosperity. I give thanks now that such and such is prospering now. And I give thanks that I am prospering now. Because I'm worthy of a higher thought. You see, I can't be willing that one prosper without the other prospering. Always include yourselves in, pros in prayers of prosperity, in prayers of healing, in prayers of knowing, and prayers of love. Always include yourself. Because you, you, if you are questioning the good of another, you're questioning the good of yourself. It has to be. How could you even be aware that another is lacking good if you aren't uh, having a thought about your own? I mean, the mere fact that you think there is someone who is lacking good in your life means there's an absence of good in your life, isn't there? I mean, it's, it's simple logic. But now we are worthy of a higher thought. We have to put down our judgments of our past, where we have come up short. Sinned is the word they use in olden times. But what is sin except we fell short of the ideal? We forgot we were worthy of a higher thought. You know, we may have come here with somebody screaming at us all the time. And quite frankly, somebody screaming at you all the time and telling you you are less than good, you are likely to forget that you are worthy of a higher thought. There are certain children, somehow, they know it. They are just aware of it no matter what, and they do not agree with those adults. I was in between on that. I was While my mother was screaming at me, my grandmother loved me so much. And she reminded me all the time that I was good and loved. She didn't have to tell me I was worthy of love. She showed me. So I had that. My mother had forgotten that she was worthy somehow. And my grandmother tried to tell her, and it was, my mother relied on, her information was dependent upon circumstances and uh, events. And so she, she forgot. Later on, I think she started to remember. My mother became a really wonderful mother to me later on in life. But the childhood, I, I was blessed with a grandmother who uh, she reminded me all the time. And, and so I was torn, depending upon who I decided to listen to and who I decided to, to agree with. And so to look at that and say, Lord, uh, I am unworthy 
of you coming into my house, but won't you come in anyway and heal and heal. Now, in this case, the, the, the centurion represents uh, the mind and the servant represents the body metaphysically. And so the servant, the centurion in, in the mind, he knew. Somewhere in him, in him, he knew. I will ask for what I want because I know it's possible even though I don't think I'm worthy of it. He didn't go to Jesus entitled. I'm entitled. I'm a leader. I have soldiers under me. I have all this. You have to do this. He didn't say that. He said, please come in and do this and because uh, I know you can. And I know he can be healed. And Jesus says, this guy's got great faith. Of course I'm coming in. I'm going to come in. I'm going to do the healing. We will be about God's business. And what is a healing except a reminder of what God is, of what wisdom is, of what wholeness is? A divine reminder of what we are. And so and to go about our day today, now there's some questions and answers I, I put down here that, that I think is great. It says, what makes a person an authority on any subject? Well, the response is his mastery of the subject, which he gains by intensive study and application, as well as by using in his daily work the knowledge thus acquired. Now it says intensive study. It doesn't say reading a lot of books. Intensive study could be daily meditation, perhaps a few times a day. It is learning how to pray through, through affirmations and denials, as, as we are taught to do in unity. See, when I came into unity, within a couple of weeks, I learned so much. I took classes. I went to Sunday teaching, Sunday services. I took three classes a week, and I mean, immediately I signed up for them. And what, 1997? Yeah, I, I, I was taking these called three different teachers, and they were all so different. One teacher, you never had to open a book. He just gave you the information, and it was wonderful, and you could hear it in a way that was fantastic. Uh, the second teacher, you did have to open up the book, and or she'd yell at you. And you had to, oh, she, Mary Alice Brown, she, she, she has left the planet, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and... But she, <laughs> I've told you this story before, but it's a good one. You should start the class with an affirmation. I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it, and my body shows it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. No, I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it, and my body shows it. Say it. I said, oh, she's so mad. <laughs> Why is she so mad at us? And it took months for me to realize, oh, she's passionate. And this is how she's expressing her passion. You see, she had had a healing. She, you know, she had, had been quite ill, and she had had a complete physical healing and spiritual healing and emotional healing. So she knew these things make all the difference in the world, they aren't just words. They aren't just a nice saying. They make a difference because they change the mind. They change the thought. And they offer us higher thoughts all the time. So, I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it. Can we all say it together, please? Um, I am alive, alive alert, alert, awake, awake. Joyous and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it. That wasn't quite enthusiastic. Enough. I'm not going to yell at you yet. But let's do it again. 
I am alive, alert, awake, joyous and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it again. I am alive, alert, awake, joyous and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it again. I am alive, alert, awake, joyous and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it. You see, as the more you do it, the more joy-filled you become because you start to realize, oh, wait a minute, I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body does know it, and my body does show it. And so to begin to realize that, oh, my goodness, I have tools. I have tools to thrive. And as I demonstrate those tools, as I begin to witness them in my life, in all my circumstances, my misery begins to fade away. And I begin to manifest a higher life, a nicer life. I, I begin to manifest a greater consciousness. And then I begin to manifest greater body function. For many of us, we manifest greater finances, materiality, and that's all great unless that becomes the object of your existence. In all manifestations, we need to be praising the source. We need to realize, oh, it is the source that does this. As Jesus said, why do you call me good? It's the Father within that does the works. You know, they kept praising him, praising him, praising him. He didn't need the praise. The praise needed to come from him, not at him. It wasn't about, oh, you're so good. Oh, you did this. Oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, you are, you are. And he kept saying, no, 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 not me, God. Quit looking at me. It's God. It's God within. Every one of you has the power to do what I do. Every one of you has the power within you. And all you have to do is become aware that you are worthy of a higher thought. That's all you have to do. The woman who was bleeding that touched the hem of his garment. And he said, and he knew he could feel the energy come through him and out to her. He could feel it. Said, Who, where are you? I see, I know you're here. And then she she revealed herself. And then and, and she said, I wanted a healing. And he said, uh, what did he say? I just went blank. It's your faith. It's your faith. Thank you. Wow. It is your faith that has made you whole, says the nice man in the back of the room. It is your faith. Why didn't you know that? <laughs> it is your faith that has made you whole. Go forth and sin no more. Go forth and sin no more. Now, I, it's a Bible interpreter who said sin. It's go forth and forget no more. Go forth and remember. Just go forth and remember so that you never have to feel guilty that you can heal. You don't have to be guilty that you forgot. And you don't have to be ashamed that you need to ask for help. See, asking for help means you have faith that you can heal. It is your faith that makes you whole. It is your faith that makes you whole. It's also your faith that makes you miserable. Which way are you directing your faith? But let's focus on it as your faith that makes you whole. And so, size of a mustard seed. Faith the size of a mustard seed. It is your faith that makes you whole. And so, to realize, oh, so I'm worthy of a higher thought. So on the days you forget, Remember, I know it sounds simpler than it is, but or easier than, than I, whatever. It is easier and simpler than what it might sound like. They're the only thing that could prevent any of us from having that next higher thought is our unwillingness to have it. And so we have to get in the habit of constantly calling forth the higher thought and then acknowledging it and noticing it when it's here. And that we don't have to go to that next place. Remember, when I go low, I can go high. When I go low, I can go high. 
Hi. And so to look at that, I don't know if there's any more here. Mm -hmm. I love this. How is Christian healing done? By speaking the word of truth aloud or silently to the one who is in need of healing. And by knowing without doubt that the healing is now accomplished because the word of truth is quick and powerful. Firm faith must be present in the mind of, mind of the one who speaks the word and also in the mind of the one to be healed or in someone who is close to them. So if you were to help facilitate a healing in another being and the one you want to help doesn't believe, just doesn't believe, then you need to find someone who is close to that person who does to be present and hold the space for this one as you are holding the space for this one. Begin to work with others. Don't isolate in your healing powers. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. And once you are set free, don't call yourself back into bondage. Once you have set your free, yourself free, and you are willing to help facilitate the freedom of others, give up your complaints. You no longer have authority over your complaints. You no longer have the right to your sad story. That was then. And now that sad story has led you here to the realization of the Christ awakened within. That story, that old story has led you here where you may know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That old sad story has led you here. Steve, am I still on the camera? That story, that old story has set you free. Set you free, set you free to thrive, to prosper, to have fun, to play again, to love your brothers and your sisters, including the ones you didn't used to like. But today, whether you like them or not, has no bearing on it. Because that story of whether you like them or not is inconsequential. There's this new story in town, and it's the story of God. And it is the story of God active and present in your mind, in your cells. Do you believe today, even with the faith the size of a mustard seed, that all healing is possible? If you don't, would you like to believe? And if the answer is yes, then you do believe. Just know now, I would like to believe, therefore I do believe. I just don't know how. And what I tell you is, you do know how. You go within and you declare, I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it and my body shows it. And then you give up any and all claim to the past. I think that'll do us for today. Thank you.